Okay, it's on. It's uh, September 18th, uh, September 17th. And it's, uh, we're having a conversation here in my Palo Alto studio with Peter Seltz. And, uh, okay, we can, we can start and I'll try to answer your questions. All right, man. A number of questions relating to these paintings which I like very much indeed. Now, of course, one thing that immediately comes to mind is the question about the fact that you simultaneously uh, painted realist paintings and uh, abstract paintings. Uh, that is fairly rare. I mean, de Kooning did it in, way back in 1950-51 when he did great abstract paintings, uh, uh, like excavation. At the same time, uh, did figure paintings like the women's series. And the, uh, uh, but um, it's very rare, very rare an art that I've seen, seen. I haven't seen too many artists who do it, did it at the same time. Instead of in periods. Instead of in periods. Like Austin, you know, an abstract period and then a figure period. Uh, so uh, how do you do this? How do you, when do you decide to make a realist painting or an abstract painting? When do I decide? Yeah. When do you decide, and it's, how do you decide? It's it's inc it's um, it's very instinctive. It's not. I suppose a lot of people who paint make conscious decisions about boundaries for their work or where they set out, what they want to articulate. And all of my painting is very instinctive. It feels um, like I'm writing a song. And, and when the song is moving along, I'm simply involved. And as I'm working on an abstract painting and I'm mixing a color, the color could easily remind me of something that wasn't working in another painting. And I'll return to the other painting and it, it might be another abstract painting, it might be another representational painting. The, the representational paintings that I make are very shape and color driven, which is the same as my abstract paintings, they're shape yeah. and color driven. So I don't feel, I don't feel a, a great leap between the two types of painting. And, and I don't feel that there is a stylistic uh, message to either one or a stylistic problem that would prevent me from moving back and forth. I, I know that Diebenkorn said he couldn't imagine making an abstract painting one day and then making yeah a representational painting in the same week. He felt like to go back and forth so quickly was an indication of uh, maybe lack of focus or, and certainly maybe uh, a lightness of intent. Uh -huh. But for me, um, there's no problem. The intention is, is very instinctive and very powerful in both. And I suppose that's why I can go back and forth because I don't feel any any uh, particular message that is coming through in the abstraction that does not come through in the representation. Well, I can see that. Right? The painting on the lower left here, uh -huh. I mean, you have that shadow, which is totally abstract, has n nothing to do with the buildings. And uh, uh, on the back on the back of the painting, there are these barns, uh, fairly realistically painted uh, houses. And then on the right, there is an abstract uh, form which looks very much like the abstract paintings I see on the wall here. Now on these uh, representational paintings, you painted them in many different places, or they refer uh, uh, to uh, different places, Italy and Denmark and California, uh, but you, you, don't, you, don't paint, you don't paint plein air. You, uh, well, I painted uh, outside a lot and much earlier. Uh -huh. And I painted outside because it was important for me to be in front of the motif in the sense that I had identified relationships that I really wanted not to so much imitate but to capture or to uh, make sense of. And so being on location, being in the, in the place was important. Um, the experience of being outside was, I think it was, uh, it was interesting and the whole complication of how you set up and work outside it, it made for a good problem, but eventually I found that when I came back inside, 
I was able to continue the painting and using all of the colors that I had mixed uh -huh. when I was outside trying to make the painting, trying to resolve it or finish it or start it, here are all these colors that I'd mixed on the palette and I come back inside and it seemed very natural just to continue with those colors because really that's what the, the, the plain air quote piece had been about as yeah. opposed to the place. Yeah, no sketches. I, I just paint. I don't yeah, ever so feel that I'm doing a preparation for yeah, something yeah. or... So the color comes right there. I kind of go straight into it. I, see that's, I can see that. Yeah, just, yeah. And even when the colors are becoming stacked or, or the way some areas I think of the paintings, someone said that some of my process looks a lot like printmaking and some areas where there is the um, color coming through in the bottom, it isn't an underpainting in the sense that there was any strategy or any awareness that if I put down this color, I can put another color on top and get a certain result or effect that I know works. All of them, again, maybe this is a better way to articulate the connection between the two types of work. They're all, to some extent, an exploration of an idea or a feeling or an intent. And I think the, they're equivalent in the sense that they're all exploring something. In a way, they explore color more than anything else. I would agree, yes. And uh, uh, your decision of what colors to use, is that intuitive or is it carefully planned? It's very intuitive. It's not planned. It's only planned in the sense that I know where to begin the painting and therefore I get started. But then inevitably the painting goes off in a direction and, and a dialogue results between myself and the painting and the color, knowing where to start is only about getting started. Yeah. It's never about a confidence that you know where to start and you know where to finish. It's just a, a sense of, I know how to begin, therefore I can get started. And then we go into the exploration and we see how the painting gets resolved. And it's very important because every painting has a different resolution point, a different resolution. There's never a sense...